20 huge boss ideas in Mario Maker 2. Today, we will feature 20 boss fights that feature enormous creations. We're not talking about adding a mushroom to Bowser here. No, we're talking about making bosses that take up most of the screen, if not an entire room. Stick around, because the bosses get crazier toward the end of the video. Let's get started. The world materializes around Mario, and he sees Toadette the Inventor waiting for him. Mario explains that he's on a mission to save Blue Toad, and that Luigi is under an evil curse from gobbling too much sweet, sweet gold. It turns out that Toadette has been on the exact same quest, and tracked Luigi to this strange dimension. Luigi, under evil influence, has divided his power into 20 parts and created Morphling Giants to protect it. With the help of her new invention named the Giant Energy Weakness Detector Apparatus, or Gouda, Toadette plans to take them all down. Mario promises to defend Toadette's laboratory as she sets off on her epic journey. Toadette's Gouda led her to a quiet and eerie location underwater. When she swims towards the light, she stumbles into King Finn's domain. This giant shark morphling is made up of large fish bones moving on tracks. Toadette needs to keep her distance while avoiding charging fish bones that come out of the shark's mouth and more appearing out of pipes. The Gouda has had enough time to determine how Toadette can beat this bony fish and remotely laid a trap ahead. Toadette swiftly swims while leading King Finn to the end of this tunnel and springs her trap of large spike balls on conveyor belts. The spike balls tear through the monster and weaken the strength of the evil curse. Toadette keeps swimming until she sees the water getting murky. She decides to take a boat across to find the next Morphling. She enters a door and drops into the Kraken's lair. This beast is made up of bullet blasters, cannons, and munchers with arms that sweep across to damage Toadette. The Gouda summons explosives to give Toadette a fair chance against the Kraken. She jumps on a bob -omb to ignite it and throws it at the base of the behemoth. The Kraken gets angry and rises out of the poison, now shooting poison fish minions to attack. Toadette keeps her cool and throws one more bob -omb to defeat this beast and drop his body into the grape jelly. Toadette finds a seemingly abandoned cave and wants to explore for more giant morphlings. She slips through a pipe and drops down in front of the Chompodon. This mammoth with a chomp head launches a variety of spicy projectiles at Toadette as she scurries forward in the cave. Toadette manages to do light damage to the beast, but it adapts and makes her fireballs ineffective. The Gouda alerts Toadette to some helpful weapons ahead. At the end of the narrow hallway, she gears up with a cape and a shellmint and takes out the head and body of the beast. That should have done it. The Chompadon grew new legs and body and wants revenge. Toadette needs to jump up at the perfect moment to hit POW blocks while avoiding becoming dog food. When she hits the POW, a pipe opens up and gives her the ammo she needs. Toadette grabs the shell and launches it across the arena to defeat the Chompadon once and for all. Toadette is noticing that the Morphlings are adapting and becoming more difficult to fight. She immediately runs into a deadly hover tank piloted by Bowser Jr. Toadette climbs vines and avoids fast cannonballs and fire projectiles. Rogue chain chomps try to take a bite as Toadette dashes forward away from them. Toadette's Gouda identified a way to shut off the hover ability of the tank. She rushes forward quickly to find an on-off switch. When Toadette hits the on-off switch, the hover tank loses flight and falls into the abyss below. The next Morphling decides to become as large as possible and takes the form of a gargantuan creature called Megaleg. Because Megaleg is so large and can't move, Toadette can climb over its head to grab some weapons below. With a pow and a shellment, she explores above the boss to find a way to possibly damage it. She activates a P-switch and quickly wall jumps up to hit an on-off switch. Now Megaleg summons Blastamecha Koopas to shoot homing missiles at Toadette. The Gouda tells her to redirect the missiles to damage the beast's eyes, the only weakness of Megaleg. When she does, she can take down Megaleg the Morphling and weakens the evil curse. The Morphling Giants are getting smarter, and the next one decides to become a seemingly infinite stack of bosses. Toadette's goal is to team up with Red Yoshi and ignite bob -ombs behind the Infinity Stack. She needs to defeat countless bosses that block the pathway and avoid missiles and angry lifesaver projectiles. 
When the on-off switch is triggered, a shelmet above immediately turns the red dotted line blocks back on to allow the infinity stack to keep fighting after damage. After what feels like hours of hard work, she finally defeats the stack and Bowser Jr. enters the arena. A short battle with him eventually rids the universe of the evil infinity stack and sends a message to the other giants. Toadette takes a walk to get some fresh air after that stressful battle. She walks through a door and faces Planty, the ginormous piranha plant. Planty launches bullseye bills from its mouth and a smaller winged piranha plant guard spits fire. The Gouda created a fire flower in the skybox to help Toadette. To defeat Planty, Toadette needs to unlock the fire flower by jumping on spicy homing bullets from Planty. With the fire, she can burn the bodyguard, which was the real source of the evil power, to try to misdirect her. She conquers this foe and escapes. As she tries to leave, a murderous motor car driven by Bowser starts to pursue Toadette. In this encounter, Toadette is stuck between the car and a slow moving wall as she fights off enemies. Muncher suddenly chomp Toadette while she attempts to dodge Bowser's fire and bullseye bills. The Gouda directs Toadette to plant an explosive device in the vehicle that can only go off at the perfect moment. She continues to elude the crazy car and slips through a pipe. The murderous motor car now has enough distance away, so Toadette detonates the explosive and weakens the evil curse. Toadette takes to the sky for a moment of peace from these relentless giant morphlings. She hears a sound approaching and comes face to face with the Boom Doom Copter. The Boom Doom Copter has two winged Boom Booms and a burner allowing it to fly while Toadette dodges cannonballs and bullet bills. Once the burner gives the copter enough momentum, the winged Boom Booms jump off and try to take Toadette down. The Gouda tells Toadette to trick the copter to land on a P-switch at the top of the area. When it looks like she has nowhere to go, Boom Doom Copter lands and accidentally activates that P-switch, causing the wall to explode. Toadette then enters the copter, ignites two large bob bombs to explode, and destroys the machine from within. The Morphling Giants are growing sick of Toadette's persistence. They decide to get inside her head to inflict psychological warfare. Graveyards have always been spooky for Toadette. She fears skeletons rising to attack. Naturally, the next Morphling becomes the Skeleton King, a dry bones, cannon, and coupling undead creation. The Gouda tells Toadette that the Skeleton King can only keep his power by consuming the living. Toadette keeps her distance and dodges green apple flavored rings, fire, and grinders. The Skeleton King is running out of time to consume the living because of his extremely slow pace. Toadette survives long enough to slip into the door and leave the Skeleton King to decompose. Toadette absolutely loved playing the Legend of Zelda games as a girl, but always feared facing Ganon. In this fight, she becomes Link to face her fears head on as the giant Morphling becomes Ganon to take her down. Linkette drops into a dark field against an enormous boss. She grabs a shelmet and avoids poison mushrooms that chase her. Linkette climbs atop the horror and finds the weak point on its head in the form of a P-switch. When she steps on it, Bowser escapes in a clown car and pursues. Linkette grabs a star to become invincible and jumps into Bowser to shut down this part of the evil curse. Toadette was always great at math, but had a recurring nightmare that she couldn't solve a simple addition problem. In this boss battle, she goes up against a gargantuan addition symbol. Skewers, cannons, fire bars, and homing missiles all try to defeat Toadette as she climbs on vines and attempts to solve the problem in the room. Once she finds and collects four pink coins, she solves this room and robs the giant of its power. Toadette's favorite bath time toy as a kid was a rubber ducky. The Morphlings want to cause mental trauma by becoming a jumbo-sized evil duck with coupling wheels. Toadette dodges, ducks, dips, dives, and dodges to avoid green Cheerios and booze. The Gouda determines that the rubber ducky will fall apart if away from water for too long. Toadette endures the epic chase long enough for evil ducky to disintegrate and lose its power. Toadette always worried that robots could outsmart organic beings and become strong enough to take over the universe. This giant morphling takes form of Robotron. 
Two winged Bowser Juniors throw hammers and lava bubbles launch out of bullet blasters as Toadette tries to keep her distance. Robotron backs Toadette into a corner, and she goes down into a pipe to find safety. Now she faces off in a small room against the android. Her invention says that Robotron's weakness is the lowest point of its body. She grabs a dry bones shell to safely move in the lava and slams the platform to drop the bottom in the lava. When she drops all three segments of Robotron into the lava, she can rid the universe of this evil. The only thing worse than regular snakes are lava serpents. Toadette faces off against a slithering, fiery vermin. Toadette moves upward in an auto-scrolling vertical subworld to evade the serpents that follow wild track patterns. Using vines and claws, Toadette slips away from these burning monsters. If she stays one step ahead, Gouda says the serpent will lose some of its heat. Once parts of its body cool off, Toadette jumps on the snake and jumps to hit an on-off switch. After enough hits, she leaves the serpent to fizzle out and drains the evil power from it. Toadette's irrational fear that she's never shared with anyone involves birthday cakes coming to life and attacking. Her fear comes true as she drops into a room against deadly dessert. Toadette immediately dodges the candles and moves down to the table. Cannons fire from within the cake to try to hurt her as she uses cannonballs to jump up and hit on-offs. The Gouda dictates that the on-off switch can cause a P-switch to drop down. After bonking her thick skull into the switches long enough, Toadette crushes the insides of this deadly dessert and leaves this terrible party. Toadette loves the concept of Toy Story, so of course the next giant takes form of a Titan Transformer toy. Huge missiles, laser beams, hammers, and cannonballs attack Toadette as she works to activate her invention. The Gouda locates a weak point on top of the enemy, and Toadette causes the bottom half of Titan Transformer to melt away. The rogue toy chases her now as she plans her next move. Gouda says the Titan Transformer's weapons must be used against it. Toadette grabs a Super Mario Bros. 2 mushroom, grabs a cannonball, and destroys the Blast of Mecha Koopa. Now she battles against Wing Bowser Jr. as he desperately tries to avenge the Transformer. After a few bounces on his head, Toadette conquers this demon toy and weakens the evil curse. Toadette's favorite movie of all time is Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. The next giant morphs into the famous AT-ATs from the Battle of Hoth. Toadette climbs up the leg of the first machine to look for a weakness. She attacks the giant turtle captain to steal its shell as ammunition and smashes through the head of the first enemy. In the next encounter, she hires a mercenary Thwomp to help her. Toadette explores to find a P-switch to remove the shield from the front of the ATAT -AT and orders the Thwomp to smash through the head of enemy number two. Toadette sneaks into the last ATAT -AT and finds tons of explosives. Before it can wreak havoc, Toadette hits the switch to obliterate the third and final machine. Toadette has finally tracked down Luigi, and he is bigger and more powerful than ever before. Even though the other Morphlings were destroyed, he split himself into countless giant heads to take down this pink pest with everything he's got. He launches cannonballs, bullet bills, minions, and more at Toadette, and even uses Bowser to try to finish her off. In his weakened state, the Gouda is able to find the true evil Luigi and sets a trap for him. Toadette enters the room and giant spike balls shred through evil Luigi to finally put him to rest. Toadette only hopes that she destroyed the evil curse and not Luigi himself.